Whether it's time-saving tricks, sneaky shortcuts, or learning how to use powerful features, there are so many ways to level up your Figma game as a designer. But some of these things will be more helpful than others. So in this video, I've gathered my top three Figma tips that I think you need to learn to take your Figma skills to the next level. All right, everyone, we are inside of Figma. Let's jump to the first point. And this point, it's the biggest point. This is the thing you need to be using in 2023 if you wanna be serious about design, UI design, web design. You don't have to dig into the deepest of depths of auto layout immediately, but I think you should be starting to use it just for smaller things. So for example here, if you have two objects, we have a heading, we have a subheading. I can take these two objects, hit Shift A to add an auto layout, and now I have so much capability just through adding an all layout. I can change the spacing like this. I can change the orientation like this in the auto layout sidebar menu here. I can change the alignment over here. Like you get so much power just through adding auto layout to two text fields like this. Same with this. If you have an avatar and a title, you can change the orientation once again. You can change the spacing compared to if you had a group, you would have to do things manually like this. I, I don't have any settings where I can easily change stuff. I would, do, I would have to do everything by hand like this. So in that case, super, super good as well. If we have rows or data fields like this, I could take these two add an auto layout, and now I can just copy this and paste it, and boom, we have like a table in no time. If we have avatar images, I can add an auto layout, and you can see how it spaces out like this, but then we can just use minus spacing instead. Pretty freaking epic. If we have a card layout, same thing, add an auto layout, and I can add more cards, and just, yeah, increase the amount that easily. Buttons as well, I usually use auto layout for buttons, hit Shift A, change the horizontal padding a bit, then hit Fill, change the color of the text, change the border radius or corner radius, however you wanna, or whatever you wanna call it. And here we have a button, super simple, just like that. So that's auto layout, main thing. Second thing is sneaky shortcuts. And these are shortcuts I use all the time and I thought I wanted to share them. So the first one being the ability to copy and paste styles. So in this case, we use Alt plus Control plus C. And now when I go to this object, and I hit Alt plus Control plus V, I get the blue color onto this. So I copy the styles from this and paste them onto this. If we have a rectangle and we add some radius and we change the color again, I do the same here and we take a rectangle that has no radius, we get the border radius or corner radius as well. So very, very useful, something I use all the time. We have zooms, so if we hit Shift-1, we're gonna zoom out to our full canvas. Then if I target something on my canvas and I hit Shift-2, I'm gonna zoom into that object. This makes it much easier to navigate around your document. Scale tool, okay? This is something that took me so long to actually start using. I think it, like I started using it sometime last year and I've been doing design for many years, uh, which is a bit embarrassing, but the power of this tool is kind of insane. And let me show you why. So this is a rectangle where I've added border radius. If I scale this just the normal way like this, you can see how it is no longer at some point, it is no longer a uh, circle because it's, it's a rectangle with, with rounded corners. 
Now, if we use the K tool, so I hit K, and I hit go to the sidebar menu here with scale, and I hit 10x, you can see how it also scales the corner radius. So this is the way to scale stuff if you really wanna scale everything uniformly. And I cannot recommend it enough. And the last thing being that just a classic color picker. So if we have this blue color here, but we want something else, hit I and we can choose whatever we want on our canvas, hit it and we get that color. But even though it seems like, oh, that's such an easy, easy, easy shortcut, I think a lot of people don't use it still. So color picker being the last one and now over to the third point, which is also something that I think is super underrated and that is the Figma community. The Figma community is like this hidden, like just hidden little treasure where you can go in and you can find things like wireframing kits. You can find things like loading spinners. So if you have a prototype, you have a project where you wanna indicate that something is loading, you can search for loading spinner and probably find I don't know, tens of projects where people have created animated loaders that you can just steal. Uh, I mean, don't steal it, give credit in that case, but you can take them and use them and people are, people are gonna be fine with that. So that's awesome. You can also find things like illustrations. Um, if you wanna create some form of, a, or some sort of a retro project, some, I don't know, space project, some, something cool, you can probably search for retro in the Figma community and find something like this, and you can go in and use it. Same thing for just icons. If you wanna find uh, an icon library that is made up out of strokes, well, search for stroke icon and you will probably find something for that as well. So the Figma community, do not underestimate it, guys. Until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.